money in the world. Good night. Why don't you go? Good night. obviously. But why this particular grave? Can you offer any possible explanation? Well, strangely enough, I can. The most curious story came to light recently about Francis Rael, whose grave this is, from an old parchment found when the church was being restored. Uttering dire threats against the Strouds, the demented Rael became as one possessed, and from that day forward, growing more and more like the loathsome bird he'd lost. Then it goes on to tell of something in 1749 that could connect with this open grave. What was that? And a newly born child of the Strouds family mysteriously disappeared, never to be seen again. And? Well, the villagers, who by now were convinced that Rael was in league with the devil, claimed that he turned himself into a vulture and carried the child off to some secret lair. They seemed ready to believe anything. Well, in those days of deep superstitions, they were. Then what? But according to this, something rather dreadful. The Stroud family seized Rahal in the middle of the night and buried him alive. In the church, on? Oh, no, 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 in a field. In the same place where Rahal had buried his curious pet. Later, they were both supposed to have been dug up and reburied where the tombstone is now. By the clergy? No, no, by persons unknown. The clerics of the time, so the writer says, refused to give Rahal's body a burial service or to have it buried in a consecrated place. But it is. Well, that's just the point. From what I've recently discovered, it isn't. According to the original drawing, church property actually ends here. That is common ground. The whole story is quite plausible, then. In parts. There's more to it, though. Before Francis Rial was buried, he apparently put a curse on the Strouds. Hmm, that's understandable, too. Threatening to return in years to come and destroy every remaining member of the family, from the oldest to the youngest. It's all very interesting, but I fail to see where it ties in with this violated grave. When Riel was reburied, all his money is supposed to have been put in the coffin as well. A casket of gold coins, guineas. I see. Then your idea is that someone with knowledge of the story opened the grave last night in the hope that it was true, that there was gold there. I can think of no other reason. But why remove the skeleton from the coffin? We've no proof there was ever one there. There's nothing about Rael or any of this in the church records. But enough for a thief to go on. Footprints wouldn't show on the path, so that's the way it would have gone. Or by the road. Well, there's a grave and there's a tombstone. The only thing to account for now is this woman's hair going white overnight. I saw it. An enormous black bird, like a vulture, with a dreadful human head. Oh, it was horrible. Horrible. Are you sure that it wasn't just someone climbing out of the open grave? Someone who dug it open to search for something? The grave opened from underneath. Opened as I stood there watching it. 
And I saw it. An enormous black bird like a voucher with an awful human head. And then it flew. Flew right over me. I'll never forget it. Inspector Brown, Scotland Yard. Oh, thank you. Mr. Trout? Trout, how are you? We've been called in to assist in the investigation regarding the uh, incident in the churchyard last night. Oh, excuse me. This is my niece, Mrs. Wilkins. How do you do? Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. You've seen that old parchment from the church, I understand. Yeah, the vicar showed it to me as soon as it was found. Had you ever heard the Francis Riel story before then? Well, no. Then there's nothing you can offer that would point to the story being true. No, absolutely nothing. You see, the record on my ancestors prior to 1805 were lost in a fire. Now, I don't know what my ancestors did, but I'm sure they didn't go around burying people alive. As for that casket of gold that was found, well, things were a little hard in 1749, and I can't conceive of them burying the gold along with the dead. Well, someone wanted to make sure, hence the open grave. It's up to you to find out someone. We will. The thing that confuses the issue is the mental state of this Ellen West. She rambles on and on about seeing a big black bird like a vulture with a human head. What a horrible thought. That's all it is, is a thought. It's nothing, pure nonsense. But her shock was a severe one. And a vulture does figure prominently in that parchment, doesn't it? Which could have fired her imagination. The story is common knowledge in these parts, apparently. This is something that would interest my husband, Inspector. He's due here this afternoon from New York on holiday. Oh, you see, my uh, niece came over ahead of time. What does your husband do, Mrs. Lutens? He's a nuclear scientist in the service of the American government. Well, forgive me, but I don't see the connection. This has nothing to do with science at all. It's strictly a matter of theft. And this woman, and what she claims to have seen, sufficient to turn her hair completely white? An owl flying over an open grave. That's what Superintendent Wendell thinks. The rest is just imagination. It's best left to the doctors. What's the matter? Too frightened to speak? You saw something you shouldn't have. You should have kept your mouth shut. Things happen in this world no one can account for or should try to. Most folk round here believe in these things and leave well alone. When that grave is filled in, what they're frightened of now will be forgotten. And that's how it should be. What are you doing here? gentleman or does he still miss Canada? No, he likes it here, but not the climate. He's developed a chest complaint, got caught in a sudden shower. Uh, that's English weather. Sunny one minute, rainy and cold the next. Yep. But this peace and quiet's wonderful after New York. And who had to talk you into coming? You were right, Trudy. I was working myself to a standstill. Now I'm going to relax. This is where life goes on undisturbed. 
It's not doing so at the moment, though. What? Something happened last night. The villagers are in a state of terror. I doubt if any child will be allowed out after dark. What's it all about? I'll let Uncle Brian tell you, then you won't have to hear it twice. The part that interests me is this woman's story. I thought it would. Oh, the woman's out of her mind. Uh, you can't dismiss what she says just like that. Eric, you're one of the top nuclear scientists in the world. You better stand there and tell me you believe in ghosts. I don't like dismissing things for want of an answer. And there's an answer badly needed here for this whole weird business last night. What does this woman do? Does she work? She's a school teacher. Well, there you are. This type of person isn't frightened into a state of shock through sheer imagination. It's got to be something more than that to turn her hair completely white. What, uh, what exactly do you mean? I want to know more about it, that's all. I want to know the reason, the real one. I thought you were here on a vacation. <laughs> that's right, so I am. has. I guess it's the enormity of it. One thing man can only just keep at bay. And can't tamper with. Exactly. You know, it's nice having you around like this all day. I didn't realize what I was missing. You soon get tired of me. Oh, yeah? Well, you show me how to retire and we'll elope. That makes our present relationship sound positively indecent. Hey there! Yeah? Come and look! Just stay here. We'll go to the top and have a look. The rest of the sheep is in the recess behind that ledge. But how could it have got there? I don't like the look of this, Trudy. Not one bit. It's too bad this parchment doesn't tell us where Francis Riel went in his last voyage. Why? Because he could have been at one time or other on Easter Island. Well, what makes you say that? The birds there were sacred to the islanders. At least that's the legend. Their god was Manutara, half man, half bird. Oh. It could account for Rial bringing back that curious pet. He may have delved into this strange belief and got carried away with it. This is the only tombstone bearing the name Rial. But there must be descendants somewhere. Well, if there are, I've never heard of them. As I told the police, there's no mention even of Jose Rial in the church records. Tell me, who did you show that parchment to when it was first found, other than Brian Stroud in the newspapers? Professor Koeniglisch. Mr. Stroud asked me to. He felt the professor would be interested, and he was. Who's Professor Koeniglisch? He's quite a well-known figure around here, a German antiquarian. A great friend of Mr. Stroud's. He has a place uh, somewhere near Tregona. I see. I'm sure the superintendent will find my theories correct. Theft was the object of this violation. The casket of gold coins? Yes. But the absence of a skeleton makes me doubt that part of the story completely. Yet I can't see anyone putting a tombstone over an empty grave or a woman being frightened out of her life at the mere sight of it open. Well, 
What do you make of this? Just a feather. Well, what kind? How did it get there? Well, it could have come from anywhere. It could have. Is there an ornithologist near here? Yes, Paul Devlin. He's an authority on all wildlife. How would I get in touch with him? You sound very mysterious, Mr. Luton. It's just something I want to check up on. Well, if you care to come back to the vicarage, I'll find you his address. Fine. Uncle, would you mind if Eric and I had dinner in town tonight? He wants to visit Ellen West. What for? To hear the story from her. We've telephoned the hospital. Well, she's completely mad. You know this, don't you? Eric doesn't seem to think so. Where is he now? Gone to see a man called Devlin. West, I don't want to distress you, but I'm very anxious to hear your story. You see, I'm a scientist. Now, exactly what was it you saw come out of that grave? Big black bird. Like a vulture. With a human face. What was even more horrible, a pair of human hands. Oh, no. And then it flew. Yes. Across the churchyard. Over the field. Where you were found? Yes. And it was clutching something in one of its talons. What was that? I was too frightened to take much notice. Now, think carefully, Miss West. This is very important. Could it possibly have been a box, a casket? Yes. I think it could. You're not just saying this because I put the idea into your head, are you? Because you knew the story in that parchment. No. It could have been a casket. <sighs> what you saw can be only one of two things. Imagination or the result of a scientific experiment. It could have terrifying consequences. Thank you, Miss West. I may come and see you again. Churchyard. Are you following me? You're meddling with the supernatural, mister. There's no such no thing. No good will come of it, I'm warning you. I repeat, there's no such thing as the supernatural. Science, yes. Then let science not interfere with what happened in the churchyard last night. Why? You may well find an explanation. I've given you the explanation. Who are you to have all the answers? I'm the sexton. A man came by. Left this note for you. See that woman at the hospital? Yes, we did. She's still sticking with that ridiculous story? Eric doesn't think it is ridiculous, Uncle. What? Brian, there are two things I want you to do for me. Both important. Well, uh, what are they? First, an introduction to this friend of yours, Professor Kerniglish. Oh? 
What's that all about? Large one by the sound of it. I can't understand these dogs. Nor can I understand that mutilated sheep we took from the cliff this afternoon. Do you know about that, sir? Yes. What was it? Too dark to see. Got away. Oh, it was a fox problem. It flew away. It was the flapping of wings. It's got caught in the bushes. Uh, some kind of a bird or other. Some kind, yeah. And one those dogs were afraid of. Watch dogs afraid of birds. And a bird not unfamiliar with the churchyard. Can you answer that? Well, I... And I understand that sheep was found where I said. In the cliff face. You've got an answer to that too, I suppose. Although I doubt very much if it's right. You know, this is all beginning to add up. To what? To the second thing I want you to do. Brian, in spite of your chest trouble, I want you to sleep with the windows closed and locked. Well, if I did that, I wouldn't sleep at all. Why? As a precaution against attack. From what? Something that may well have sprung into being. Oh, this comes from that ridiculous story the woman at the hospital told you. It has to do with Manutara. That is to say, something similar. What the hell is Manutara? The legendary god of Easter Island. Half man, half bird. For the moment, we'll let it go at that. But you have got to sleep with those windows closed and locked, or you may not live to regret it. Do as Eric says, Uncle. I'm asking you to as well. Well, if you insist, I will. But I don't know what's going on with you, Eric, but I think everything's gone to your head. Which I'm thinking is just as well. I thought you were going to bed. I was going to close it. I've done it for you. I guess Trudy was right. I was wasting my breath downstairs. Eric, you're not wasting your breath. It's just I don't agree with your ideas, that's all. Brian, why don't you go away for a few days? No ghost or thief is going to run me off my own place. No, I suppose not. Anyway... Keep those windows shut. Oh, Eric, uh, if you come back and recheck and I'm not here, I'll be in the study. Why don't you call it the day? Go to bed. If you can't sleep, read something. I'm the not cult? sleepy. I'm just restless. Oh, by the way, this Devlin you went to see, do I know him? No, I don't think so. He's an ornithologist. Oh, something to do with that feather you found? No, uh, a similar one I found this morning in the churchyard. Brian, how long have you known Professor Kerniglish? Well, quite a while. He's represented me at quite a few auctions. He's quite an antiquarian. Is that why you got the vicar to uh, show him the parchment? Yes, I wanted to find out from him if it was something of value. Has he got money? Well, he lives well. He's quite a man. You should meet him. Yes, I plan to see him tomorrow. Brian, all I can say is, no matter what happens, don't open those windows. All right, all right, all right. Good night, good night, good night. Good night, Brian. Was everything all right? The window was wide open. 
Your Uncle Brian is either stupid or stubborn. He's not stupid. Well, then he's stubborn. Come in. We heard you come downstairs, sir. Is there anything you require? No, thank you, Robert. What are they barking about? Are they, uh, the dogs out in the garden? Well, I'll go and see, sir, but an hour ago they were in the kennels. to greet a brother. What are you frightened of? Well, it's a hell of a way to drop in even if you are my brother. Come on in. I was on my way back from London. I saw the light on in here and I, uh, I thought maybe Eric and Trudy are still up. I want to say hello to him. Oh, well, they've gone to bed. Oh, well, what's the poker for? Well, the dogs were barking. I thought you might be a prowler. Oh. Well, I better be getting back. Will you tell Eric I'll uh, come around in a couple of days to say hello to him? Uh, Edward, why don't you stay here for a few days? The place is big enough, you know that. Thanks, Brian, but I want to get back to St. Melian. Don't see me out. I'll leave the same way I came. All right. Professor Kerniglish? Yes? I'm Eric Lutens. Mr. Brian Stroud said I might introduce myself. I'm married to his niece, Trudy. Oh, I see, I see. Of course, of course. Yes. I'm hoping to meet Trudy. I arrived last week from New York, I hear. Yes, yes. Come in, come in. Come in, Mr. Lutens. Come in. Uh, would you mind closing the door for me? I'm still suffering from the effects of a bad fall. I'm sorry. On top of that, my servant is away. Ill. Sit down, Mr. Lutens. May I offer you a cup of coffee? Uh, no, thank you. Mr. Stroud would have arranged an introduction by telephone, only... Only I don't happen to have one. <laughs> yes. To get to the point, Professor, my reason for being here is that parchment found in the church. Oh? You were very interested, I believe. Yes. Yes, I was indeed. And for a singular reason, a bit naive, perhaps. Because the German translation of the word real is the same as yours. Yes. Kornelisch. Yes. In English, royal. You're absolutely right, Mr. Lutens. And you're very perceptive, I should say. You see, I'm German-born, but uh, of Spanish origin. And I wondered if there could possibly be any, uh, any connection. And? Well... <clears throat> The parchment is genuine enough, that's true. But being unsigned, I very much doubt the authenticity of the story. 
which perhaps is all for the best. I'd hate to think that I was descended from a man buried alive as a sorcerer by the family of my good friend Brian. I can understand that, but uh, I was hoping that you'd have thought this story was authentic. May I ask your interest in this document? It has to do with the incident in the churchyard. You know about that, of course. Yes, yes, I do. Some potential thief opened the grave to see if there was gold there. Well, that's the general belief. You have other ideas then, Mr. Lutens? I look upon this woman's story with the greatest concern. Oh, surely not. I can assure you I know what I'm talking about. I'm on the experimental staff of the Atomic Energy Commission. Oh? But what has that got to do with the incident here? In the back of my mind is a growing suspicion that someone carried out a scientific experiment with the most terrifying results. You can't mean that. I do. Of course, proof is another matter. If I'm right, the next thing will be an attempt on Brian Stroud's life. This is frightening. You really mean that this woman's story about a black bird with a human head could be true? Very much so. By means of nuclear transmutation. If you've any idea what that means. Ah, yes, 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 of course I do. Uh, I mean, slightly. Certain happenings during the past two days tend to confirm it. At least they do to me. One last night. This. Eric, something happened since you went out. What's that? A man picked up a gold coin near the spot where Ellen West was found. A guinea dated 1749. Who told you? Jarvis went into town. The police now think there was gold in the grave. That the coin fell from a box carried off by the thief? Yes, a box rotted with age. We're going to that churchyard. What for? Anyone carrying a box of gold coins would have left footprints in the wet ground. Deep ones that would still be there right across the churchyard. Though it's my guess we won't find anything. Straight across the end of the field. Not a thing. Another guinea. 1749. What does it mean? That I was right about the experiment, Trudy. There's no longer any doubt. This coin fell right here out of the sky. What Ellen West claims to have seen is a fact. A terrible creature liable to attack at any time, just as soon as it gets dark. And it was in the grounds of the house last night. The danger is very real now, Trudy. To your uncle, his brother, and you. Oh, hello, Professor. Hello, Brian. How are you? Uh, uh, yeah. Fine, fine, fine. Well, you know, I'm the same. <laughs> I was passing by, so I thought uh, I would come in to meet Trudy. Oh, she's out with Eric. That's her husband. Come on in. No, oh, no, thank you. Well, I must be running along so some other day. Oh, uh, I understand you met Eric. Yes, yes, I was very much impressed with him and uh, with what he said. Then you think there's something in what this woman says? He gave me every scientific reason to think so. What did he want to see you about? Oh, because of my interest in the parchment. You know, Brian, I think you should be a little worried. Oh? Yeah. Oh, I meant to ask you, uh, how is Edwin? Oh, he's fine. I saw him last night. He's back at St. Mary's. Good. You two were very close, weren't you, before you left for Canada? Oh, we still are. Yeah. Now, what does he think about... Uh, or what's happening? Well, I haven't told him anything. Oh, you, you don't think you should tell him? Well, I don't see any cause for alarm. You may have to change your mind, Brian. Well, I must be running along. Will you please tell Trudy that I hope to see her soon? Yes, I will. Well, bye. Bye, Professor. By the way, you know, speaking of Eric, 
I find science fascinating. Well, you should have taken it up yourself. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Maybe I should. Goodbye. Goodbye. Because you found this on the tombstone. You're trying to tell me it was dropped from up above. How else did you get there? The thief put it there. For what reason? Well, to verify the woman's story and keep the police guessing. Her story wasn't known until after the coins were supposed to have been stolen. Eric, I've been out all morning and I didn't sleep all night due to the closed windows. Which now more than ever means they must remain shut. Eric, I'm tired. Let's let it go until after dinner. Brian, you're going to listen to me. You've got to believe what I have to tell you. You must listen, Uncle. This is very serious. It concerns me as well. You? Yes. And your brother, Edward. Oh, go on. Some unknown scientific brain has produced a monstrous creature, half bird, half man, by means of nuclear transmutation. Oh, you're talking about this man, the Atari thing, and you're, you're asking me to believe that? It happens to be true. A disastrous scientific fact. What is nuclear uh, uh, transmutation? The changing of atoms of one element into those of another by suitable nuclear reactions. Would you put that in simple language? A living person has been transferred through the ether and reassembled in the grave of Francis Riel. Now what was in that grave has in a like manner been transferred and reassembled in the place where the experiment was made. Is this really possible? Yes. Only something went wrong. Terribly wrong. Oh, what's that? Whoever made this experiment failed to take into account the vulture that was buried along with Riel and the threat to your family that was still in the grave. What are you trying to say now? I'm not trying to say anything. Every sound ever uttered is still in the ether, waiting to be recaptured. This unknown someone accidentally did it. Recaptured the threat of a man buried alive. And? From the grave has come this creature with a threat to wipe out every member of your family, from the youngest to the oldest, in that order. You, your brother Edward, and Trudy. What are you going to do about it? Find this creature somehow and destroy it. Eric, I can hardly believe this, even coming from you. For your own good, Brian, you'd better. Stay here till I get back. It'll soon be dawn. Remember, stay here till I get back.
must be. You can't expect me to believe a story such as yours. The dead body of a man is found torn to pieces in a cliff, and that's your only answer, huh? The only answer is a logical one, and we mean to find it. The only answer to this is a scientific one, and I've already given that to you. You're paying far too much attention to this woman, Miss Ellen West. Whose hair turned white overnight. From imagination. That's exactly what you're asking me to believe now. The screams we heard this morning, were they imagination? Within seconds, Brian Strahd wasn't anywhere to be seen. Well, he wasn't just spirited away out of the window. He was enticed away somehow and taken to that recess in the cliff by means that the life-saving gear kept on top. What about the gold coin I found on the tombstone? Put there by the thief to confuse us. A thief carried a heavy box of gold coins and left no footprints in a wet churchyard. Footprints that would still be there. Why should the churchyard enter into it with a path leading away from the grave? Because across the churchyard is the quickest way to the field where the first coin was found, isn't it? Yesterday was when the first coin was found. Three days after the event. And yesterday is when it was put there. The same time as when you found your coin. Checking that churchyard for footprints was the first thing that was done. Uh, Mr. Lutens, all this is getting us nowhere. Now that's the understatement of all times. Uh, the solution to this murder isn't in the supernatural, and that's all there is to it. But I'll grant you this. The thief and the killer of Mr. Stroud could be one and the same. Uh, someone with a grudge. For once, you people are right. you wanted me. Have you taken anything? No. You were looking at this, weren't you? Why? I've been thinking. You've been doing a lot of thinking lately, Melcher. I have, indeed. What about? Brian Stroud came from a bad family and he had to pay for it. What are you talking about? Have you lost your senses? Has the old trouble started again? There was no trouble. I'm all right. Always have been. It's all in that parchment. If a family buries a man alive, they must expect trouble, even after 200 years. The opening of Rael's tomb was robbery. The death of Mr. Stroud had nothing to do with it. Now you get that into your head. Or you'll have to see the doctor. No, why should I? I'm not sure that you shouldn't see him now. No. No use getting upset about going, Trudy. You've got to get out of here. I don't even have a flight reservation. I've made arrangements for that. I'm just waiting for the exact day. In the meantime, I've booked us into a hotel at Windsor. I'm waiting for a call now. If I go back to New York, you should come with me. Trudy, I cannot leave England until this creature has been found. I hate leaving you behind. Honey, I will be able to handle this as long as I know that you're safe. Hello? Oh, yes, is this reception? Uh, this is Mr. Eric Lutens. Well, fine, the rooms have been confirmed. Good, we'll be arriving there in about seven hours. Oh, uh, is it possible for you to get us tickets to some show in London tonight? Preferably a ballet. All right, fine, thank you very much. I'll see about the card. We're leaving shortly, Edward. Can't get over this, Eric. I can understand that. Why, Brian had to die in such a manner, I just can't imagine. Who could have done such a horrible thing? I've already told you. Well, that's too fantastic even to consider. But enough to make Trudy take the first plane back to New York. 
even though she should be here dealing with the estate. You're not going? No. Edward, you realize that you're the last but one of the family. Yes, you've said that before. And I say it again. You are next in line for attack. Then comes my wife. That's why I'm sending her out of danger. You know, you're so dead serious about this, it's quite frightening. The frightening part is your refusal to listen to me. You know, science has advanced in recent years. But not to the extent you're asking people to believe. To me, your story is beyond belief. I just cannot accept it. Well, I can't do any more than warn you. Stay away from open spaces and open windows at night until this thing is found. If there is anything to find. No. If you want to stay alive. Goodbye, Uncle Edward. Goodbye, Trudy. God bless you. You shouldn't be in here. Why keep reminding yourself? I'm trying to work things out. Do you believe the same as Eric? Yes. I'm like the police. I want a logical explanation. Someone enticed Brian downstairs into the grounds, right out of his bed. But how? Must you go over it all again? When we came in here after the screams, those windows were open. Whoever it was must have called him down there or attracted his attention in some way. When Eric came out here immediately after the screams, there wasn't a soul to be seen. Why don't you listen to him, Uncle? Just do as he says and leave it all to him. I have every respect for science, Trudy. But there is such a thing as taking it too far. And that's what he's doing. Uncle Brian thought that too. If he hadn't opened these windows, he'd be alive today. Trudy. I'm leaving England in the knowledge that you're in danger. How do you think I feel? You really believe I am, don't you? Yes. And so does somebody else. Who? Your friend, Professor Koeniglish. Perhaps he can convince you.
Oh, Edward, come in. So sorry, Edward. Such a shock. Thank you, Hans. What happened to you? Oh, a uh, very bad fall. Still suffering. Come in. Come in, Edward. <clears throat> Hans, I want to talk to you. Yes, Edward? It's about Brian's death. Uh, I understand that you believe this fantastic theory of Eric's. Could be. Do you? You don't. I can see that. I didn't come here to fence with words, Hans. I came to get your point of view. But, Edward, you just said you'd been told it. What makes you, of all people, think there's anything in what he says? Edward, science is fascinating. I had strong leanings that way myself when I was younger, but then, with comfortable income, lazy disposition, I didn't pursue it. Made a study of antiquities instead. Eric has been trying to convince me that I'm the next one to be attacked. Has he? Well, it's up to you to try and take care of yourself. Hans, I've driven out here to discuss this matter. And so far, you've said more or less nothing. All right, I will tell you why I agree with Eric Lutens. You see, Ed, would you like a drink? Thank you. Good. When are you returning home? No, I still have some papers to go through at the manor house. I'll drive home later tonight. Say, Melian is only 25 miles as the crow flies. But not having wings, of course, you will go by car. Uh, whiskey or brandy? Whiskey. Tickets you telephone for, sir. Two for this evening's performance. Thank you. Number 34. Hope I'm not interrupting. No, that's quite all right. Now that Mr. Lutens has gone, we can have a private talk. Through the ramblings of Alan West, he's turned this whole thing into science fiction. He has one supporter, other than his wife. Who? Professor Königlich. I'm not surprised. He's a charming old gentleman who'd believe anything connected with the past. Knows all there is to know about antiquities and lives in that particular dream world. But we're not dealing with fantasy. We're dealing with murder and robbery. I don't want you to think that we've been idle. I don't think that at all. Once we get our hands on that box of gold coins, we've got the killer. And we've got a lead. To the box? To someone. I may be able to say more about it tomorrow. I'm leaving tonight. Oh, where are you going? Home to St. Melian. This house holds too many memories. Yes, I'm sure it does. My telephone number is St. Melian 50924 in case you wish to reach me. Thank you. these tonight. I want to leave everything in order here. Why not stay another night, sir? It's getting late. My lawyer's calling in the morning. I must be there. As you say, sir.
morning tonight. I'm leaving almost immediately. Don't wait up for me. I'll park the car outside. You can put it away in the morning. Very good, sir. The local sexton. Let me go. The someone you mentioned this afternoon? That's right. We had him under observation, but he got away for a time out in the garden. You threatened Ellen West in the hospital. I told her she should have kept her mouth shut. How did you know? The nurse described you. What are you doing here? I thought he was that American. And what if he had been? Give him another warning. About what? To keep his nose out of things. Let what happened in the church out take its course. Leave strange happenings alone. There are strange happenings going on in your mind lately. The victor told you to go back and see the doctor. I'm all right. Always have been. We're going to search your rooms. What for? A box of gold coins. Thank you. Well, a receptionist left this for you, sir. It's Mrs. Lewis' flight to get to New York. Fine. Day after tomorrow, morning flight. Oh, there was a telephone call earlier. Who from? No name. I told them you got a threat and they said they'd bring you back later. I wonder who that could have been. Ah, good. Let's have a drink. Why did all this have to happen to us, Eric? Trudy, the idea of going to the theatre tonight was to help put this all out of your mind. I know, but it hasn't. Not with Edward and the danger he's in. And he won't believe it. You are going to stay with him, aren't you? Yes, but he doesn't know it yet. In the meantime, he's been warned, and I can't do any more than that. You know, an idea occurred to me in the theater tonight, which I should have thought about before. What was that? To find the place where this experiment was carried out. Well, where are you going to start looking? Somewhere that's been consuming an enormous amount of electric current. Hello? Mr. Lutons? Yes? It's Königly here. Jarvis told me where you were. I'm speaking from the manor house. I rang before. Oh, yes, we, um, we went to the theater. Yes, yes, so they said, uh, Mr. Lutons, I think you should come back immediately. Why? I've stumbled on something that might help you. Something to do with Brian's death. Oh, what's that? Another gold coin found near some inland caves. Caves? Yes, not far from my house. I can show you the exact spot, Mr. Lutens. I'll be there as soon as I can. I'll drive right away to your house. Trudy, this might be it. The place where this thing could be hiding. I'm going to order a faster car. Uh, this is Mr. Lutens. I'd like to uh, hire a fast car. Well, when, Mr. Lutens? Uh, right away. It's urgent. I'll drive it myself. I'll ring you back in a few moments, sir. Thank you. Trudy, uh, as long as Edward is still alive, I know that you're safe. Otherwise, I wouldn't leave you. But I want you to keep this with you at all times, okay? There. I'll get changed. Here it is, Mr. Lutens. A guinea. Dated 1749. Let me show you where it was found. Uh, about there. Just outside the caves. Late in the afternoon. By whom? Oh, local boy. 
No brought it here automatically knowing my interest in antiquities. Had no idea what it really was. Hey, dear. This looks like something, Professor. But it can't have been where the experiment was made. No? Why? Because that needed a fully equipped electronic lab. To create a creature that doesn't bear contemplating. Half man, half bird. Yeah. And there's just three of us who believe it. My wife, myself, and you. Yes. From this map, the caves look far deeper than I anticipated. Oh, yes, they're very deep and winding. You will need a strong light to search them. I had them put one in the car. Good. I'm so sorry this injury prevents me from coming along and helping. So you don't happen to have a gun, do you? Unfortunately, no. I'll get one of the matter. And whatever happens, I'll come back and tell you. All right. St. Melian in the same horrible way as Mr. Bryan. I'm going over there. those bushes about midnight. A servant heard his car pull up outside the house, then screams. I warned you. Another body torn to pieces and you're still burying your head in the sand. Thank you, Sergeant. We're looking for a killer, Mr. Lutens, with no description to go on. You've had a description. Our search is concentrated on that box of gold coins. We thought we had it last night. We were wrong. You should have listened to me. You could have given me some help and the Stroud family some protection. Right now, the only one left is my wife. Your wife can have all the protection she wants. You're a little late. She's leaving England tomorrow. In the meantime, she's getting my protection. These murders are by a maniac, someone with a grudge. We agreed on that before. But not in the way you mean. There's no question of any cliffs this time. For one good reason. The nearest are 25 miles away. Right there I might find what I'm looking for, and it's not a box of gold coins. And there he is? This is the reception desk here, Miss Lutin. Yes? We have the telegraph office on another line. About an urgent telegram for you. Oh? They wondered whether you'd like to take the message personally over the telephone. Oh, very well. Just a moment, please. You're through telegrams. Thank you.
Professor Koeniglish? Yes. I'm Mrs. Luton. Trudy. I had a telegram from my husband to join him here. Yes, yes, that's right. Is he with you? Uh, not yet, I'm afraid, but he will be. I mean, please. Uh, it might rain. Perhaps uh, you'd care to put your car in the garage. Oh, uh, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. How long do you think my husband will be? The telegram said it was urgent. He does have something very important to do here, but... This awful tragedy of your Uncle Edward must have delayed him. My Uncle Edward? You didn't know? Know what? Why, your Uncle Edward was murdered last night. Oh, no. What happened? It's in the local paper, Mrs. Lutons. I'll get you a glass of water. Jarvis, I need a drink. A large one. Yes, sir. Uh, I thought you were going straight back to your wife, Mr. Luton. I'm on my way there now. I had to come back for my wallet. Oh, I have it here, sir. You left it in the study. Fine, thanks. This is Luton's passport and air ticket, which she must have tomorrow. As soon as she's on that plane, I'll come back. Would you put a call through to the uh, hotel and get my wife on the telephone? Very good, sir. Oh, um, a telephone call came through for you this afternoon, sir. Where from? From the electricity board. Uh, about an inquiry you made by telephone yesterday. Oh, that's right. What did they say? That uh, no one in the district has been using an abnormal amount of electric current. Uh, but there is someone who's... Uh, stopped using their electricity altogether and installed his own plant uh, underneath his house, a large one, apparently. Did they say who it was? Yes, sir. The same gentleman who was here last night. Kenneglish. Yes, sir. Look, when you get through to my wife, you tell her to wait for me in the lobby of the hotel and to stay there, even if it means all night. I'm sure your husband will soon be here, Mrs. Lutons. Thank you, but it's getting late and I'd rather wait for him at the manor. As you wish. I can't understand. It started perfectly all right before. <laughs> I shall have to take a taxi. May I use your telephone? I'm afraid I haven't one, Mrs. Lutons. But uh, perhaps you'd better stay after all. But surely there must be some way of getting back to Tolfero from here? Well, yes, there's a bus, if you don't mind a short walk. I don't mind. But you have to wait there. It doesn't matter. Up there, to the main road, where you'll find a stop sign. Goodbye, Professor, and forgive me if I appear discourteous. I'm afraid I'm a little on edge. Goodbye, Miss Lutons. I'll tell your husband the way you've gone. Thank you. Goodbye.
me. The gun! What took you to that house? Your telegram to join you there. I didn't send you any telegram. You must have sent it. Oh, God, you look horrible. I know, I saw. Is he dead? He must be. He fell onto the beach. But he can't stay there. Come on, there's something I've got to do. He thought he was descended from the man buried in that grave and put it to a scientific test. This experiment was meant to be a momentary interchangement, but the whole thing was a disaster. That's why all traces of it had to disappear. What will you tell the police? Everything. How much they believe is up to them. Now that you're safe, darling, nothing else matters. We didn't go by plane, Eric. The sea trip's helping a lot. That was the idea, wasn't it? I don't think I could ever go back to Tolferro. Of course you can. A year from now and you'll have forgotten the whole thing. I wonder. The police did, didn't they? They had to. Once they saw that underground lab, that was it. There's something today, though, I only just realized. What was that? Well, they would have found out anyway, wouldn't they? How do you mean? The telegram Koniglish sent me in your name. The one you took down over the phone? Yes. He would have come to light eventually and told you where I'd gone. There was no telegram, darling. He spoke to the hotel himself. From the telephone booth. 